All right, all right, all right. So here we go. Got a new toy at the studio. Sony A7 III. And because I'm a Canon shooter, I got the Metabones EF EFS 2 Canon E mount adapter. That's the fifth generation right there. So uh, that's what I'm going to be looking at today. All right, so welcome to the next vlog. I'm going to be talking about uh, why I picked up a Sony a7 III and the Metabones adapter. Uh, but first off, I'll let you guys know that uh, I'm a Canon shooter. This is a 5D Mark III. I've been shooting Canon for 14 years. I started way, way, way back when uh, the, uh, what was it? The Canon 20D was the big deal. That was my, uh, that was my starting point and then I've been building up ever since. I didn't upgrade to the uh, 5D Mark IV because I didn't feel it was enough of an upgrade over the Mark III. Um, so I was hoping Canon would come out with something and they haven't. And uh, they're really lagging behind in the mirrorless department and that seems to be the trend right now and I enjoy shooting mirrorless. So when I read that I could put all my Canon glass and I've got quite a bit of Canon glass on the uh, Sony a7 III, I was excited because um, at first I was thinking of uh, upgrading to the Fuji to shoot weddings. I, uh, Fuji's a lot lighter, a lot smaller and that, that's the one thing I didn't like about the 5D with, with the lenses on it. It's nice for a shoot when you're shooting you know, for an hour or two but when you're shooting a full day wedding it gets really heavy. So uh, I was really excited about shooting with something a little bit lighter but I didn't want to buy the Fuji because I would need a whole bunch of new lenses. But uh, with this guy and this guy I can use all my existing Canon glass apparently so uh, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to let you know what I think about the a7 III from a Canon user's perspective. Okay, so this is the Sony a7 III. I've got to get used to saying that. Uh, and this is the Canon 5D Mark III. And you can see there's a, there's a quite a size difference and a, a pretty good weight difference. Although I do, hold on, let me put this in my right hand. I do feel like this, this is definitely a lot lighter, but it does feel very dainty. It feels very small. It feels like, uh, yeah, I'm not enjoying the weight of this now. I'm definitely not enjoying the weight, but I do love the grip. This actually fits my hand. I feel like it's not going to go anywhere if I start shaking it. And this one, oh, it makes noises too. But, um, yeah, what's all that shaking in there? That's probably the sensor. Uh, but it just doesn't, it feels like, I don't know, it doesn't feel as solid in the hands as this beefier grip here. And in terms of like actually, <laughs> I know you're probably not supposed to shake it, but when I do shake it, this the build quality on this does feel a lot more solid than this. This feels very much like a toy. I mean, if we look, let me get this off of here. This is an old Canon AE-1. Oh, look at that. It's about the same size as the old film cameras. Almost, almost identical in size, wow. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Let me put this down somewhere so I don't drop it. Okay, so uh, yeah. That's a uh, first impression, this feels very small, but comparing it to the old film cameras, it's almost identical to that. So uh, that's pretty cool. And then this is obviously like a beast compared to the old film cameras. Let's see, so there you go, there's the front view. There's the side view. I was looking at the strap, the strap is a lot, well, is it a lot smaller? Yeah, it's a little bit smaller. The, the Sony strap from the Canon strap. Anyway, the straps don't matter. You can put whatever strap you want on here. Uh, here's the back of the camera. That's what that looks like. And it's got the screen here that flips out. And uh, off, like coming from the uh, 5D Mark III, it's fantastic to have a screen that flips out. And that's pr that's probably one of the main reasons why I wanted to go with mirrorless is that uh, you know I can shoot from different angles. Although I am kind of disappointed that it isn't a flip screen. Like why can't it flip around so you can see yourself if you're vlogging or maybe you just wanted to flip out sideways so someone can see themselves as you're making a video or taking a picture of them or what if you want to shoot in portrait mode 
and how you can't really angle the uh, the screen up to see it. So I mean, it does pop out, which is nice. But I mean, why not do it the right way instead of doing it this kind of half-ass way? But you know, either way, it's still better than the uh, the Canon camera, the the 5D Mark III. Uh, I took the diopter off, if you're wondering why it looks like that, because uh, I have deep set eyes. So uh, when I put the camera up to my eyes, I uh, definitely want to uh, be able to get my eyes close to this as possible. And I find that the diop diop not the sorry, it's not the diopter. It's the um, I guess the the viewing hood or whatever you want to call it. That little piece here. All right, so that's that. And this is the Metabones adapter. Right there. It's nice because it's got a tripod collar at the bottom, so uh, yeah, so you can mount this on a stand here. Because I assume with the uh, the Canon lenses on the front, it's going to shift the center of balance. And that's what you got inside. It's uh, I don't know if you can tell. Will this focus on it? There you go. It's a nice velvety black material inside which is great. Uh, a lot of the Canon lens hoods have that uh, black velvety material in there. So uh, it prevents light from bouncing around. You get less ghosting, so that's fantastic. I'm glad to see that. Let's pop it on here. Okay, that's on there, it's pretty solid. And then we have uh, the 85 1.2. I'm gonna pop that on here. Oh, wow, <laughs> the weight. <laughs> this lens weighs more than maybe probably two cameras. <laughs> wow, and it's almost the same size if I'm pointing this at you. Let's flip this on. Wow, can't even see the camera behind there. But uh, how does that look? Canon glass on a, a Sony camera. That's interesting. Never thought I would see that, but uh, that's pretty cool. Now let's see. Does it focus? Manual mode. Oh yeah, no problem. That else, that stuff's all a little bit too close. But that's fantastic. The 85 is one of my favorite prime lenses, so I'm glad that that works on here. Oh, that shutter sounds so nice. Can you hear it? Let's focus on something. Oh yeah! <laughs> I don't even have to look through the viewfinder. I can look at the screen, which is the whole point of mirrorless. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, so let's shut this off. Try this 24 to 70 on here. Wow, it seems kind of weird to buy a light camera and then put this uh, this heavy L glass on here. I hope the uh, the Sony lenses are a little bit lighter. <laughs> it really, you feel it right here in your wrist. It really wants to pull you down. Okay, let's turn you back on. It's fully wide, zoomed in. Oh, yeah, no problem. All right, so first impressions right out of the box with the Metabones Generation is it five? I have to remember all this stuff. Yeah, genera fifth, fifth generation Metabones adapter. Let's so turn it on. Oh, what I do now? Why is it not focusing? Oh, there it goes. Okay, so I'm gonna play around with this a little more, and then come back and give you a few more of my uh, my impressions. All right, so this is the view you'll be looking at the camera from most of the time. And uh, here we go, this is the top here. You have your custom functions here, the on-off switch here, which I kind of like and don't like. I, I like the, the Canon with the switch down here, but uh, I understand why it's here. It'd be cool if this was another setting. But uh, the custom functions are great. You got one, two buttons here. You got uh, this AEL button here which you can also program, and then this AF on off, which you can program. And on this side, you have another custom button as well, which is good. So that's nice. You kind of have to reach over and hit the, the menu button, and then you can do all your work here. And uh, the menu isn't quite as complicated as everyone uh, said it would be. It's not too bad. 
And here I have it set to S and Q. Now there's a, there's a dial up here and there's an S and Q setting. And someone told me there's no time lapse on here, but if you go into the S and Q settings and you set recording, so you can go up to uh, 120 frames a second or you can go down to one frame per second. So if you go down to one frame per second in video mode, isn't that technically a time lapse? So you can do time lapse with this thing, even though some people are saying you can't. Uh, I'll experiment with that and see what uh, what it looks like. All right, guys, just came back from the rooftop, getting my early spring tan on, and I was experimenting with the one frame per second mode. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this looks like time lapse to me. So. Uh, just because there is no time-lapse feature doesn't mean you can't create a time-lapse effect with the settings of the camera. So uh, there you go. You can do time-lapse with the a7 III. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> Having some fun with the uh, 300mm f2.8 L. Um, so far I've been playing around with the camera and my impressions are very positive. Uh, it seems to work with all the Canon glass that I have and uh, it, the eye autofocus seems to work. I don't have anyone here to focus on but I put someone's face up on the TV screen and I was uh, fooling around with the eye autofocus and it's tracking pretty good. I'll try and make another video just on that to show you guys how the eye autofocus works. It's, it's very strange. I wish you have to actually set a custom button on the camera. It has a bunch of custom buttons. You can set it specifically for eye autofocus, but it's not like a feature you can flip on and flip off. You have to change the focusing mode to continuous focus and then um, you have to turn on the eye tracking. I'm just, I'm learning it also. It's a little bit uh, all over the place right now. I'm going to make another video once I learn this a little better and then I can communicate to you guys a little better uh, how to set up your camera and how everything works. But uh, so far my impressions right out of the, the, the gate are pretty positive. I like it. Uh, I was reading through the manual because uh, the Kelvin temperature of the screen inside uh, the electronic viewfinder and the back of the screen here have different Kelvin temperatures and that's a little awkward because when you look through here you see one thing and then you shoot this way and you see another thing and uh, that was a little off-putting but apparently you can adjust the Kelvin temperature in the EVF which I'm going to have to do um, and uh, I'm going to experiment with this a little bit more and I'm going to probably make a follow-up video talking about um, the eye autofocus and the focus system and how it works with Canon lenses. Because my biggest concern uh, as a Canon shooter when switching to Sony was, will my glass work? Will I be able to use it in a professional way? Is it going to be reliable? Can I make money with it? Can I take this to a wedding and, and take my shots and rely on the camera to produce sharp images? And so far it looks like the answer is yes. I'm pretty confident that it's yes, uh, but I'm going to fool around with this a little bit more. I'm going to make another video and I will talk about this setup in a little more detail. Alright, so thanks for watching. Uh, that's just a little quick vlog and I will see you guys in the next one.